This is the audio for the Unit 1 selection test. Analyze craft and structure song and excerpt from Paul Revere's ride, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Read the following two poems, then answer the questions. Song by Henry Watson Longfellow. Stay, stay at home, my heart and rest. Home-keeping hearts are happiest. For those that wander, they know not where, are full of trouble, full of care. To stay at home is best, wary and homesick and distressed. They wander east, they wander west, and are baffled and beaten and blown about by the winds of the wilderness of doubt. To stay at home is best. Then stay at home, my heart, and rest. The bird is safest in its nest. O'er all the flutter their wings and fly. A hawk is hovering in the sky. To stay at home is best. From Paul Revere's Ride. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive. Who remembers that famous day and year? He said to his friend, if the British march by land or sea from town to night, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the North Church Tower at signal light. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. Then he said, good night, and with a muffled oar, silently rode to the Charleston shore. Just the moon rose over the bay, where swinging wide at her moorings lay. The summer set, British man of war, a phantom ship with each mast and spar, across the moon like a prison bar, and a huge black hulk that was magnified by its own reflection in the tide. Meanwhile, his friend through alley and street wanders and watches with eager ears, till in the silence around him hears the muster of men at the barrack door, the sound of arms and the tramp of feet, and the measured tread of the garanders marching down to their boats on the shore. Which feature does song share with all lyric poetry? A, it expresses a single speaker's thoughts and feelings. B, it is written about events in the author's life. C, it tells a story with characters and a setting. Or D, it rhymes and has a regular rhythm. Question two. The following question has two parts. Answer part A first, then part B. Part A. Paul Revere's ride is most clearly a lyric poem that uses narrative techniques, neither narrative nor lyric poetry, a narrative poem or a lyric poem. Part B. What features of Paul Revere's ride best support the answer to part A? A, it rhymes and has a regular rhythm. B, it features character, plot, and setting. C, it focuses on thoughts and feelings. Or D, it addresses it addressed a specific audience. Number three, which of the following is most clearly used to convey meaning in song? A, the development of a conflict and plot. B, focus on a single moment in time. C, the repetition of words and phrases. Or D, a focus on details of characters' lives. Number four, one similarity between song and Paul Revere's ride is that both poems use a first-person point of view, are focused on a similar theme, use rhythm to create a musical effect, or describe events from the past. Number five, what does the British ship Somerset most likely symbolize in Paul Revere's ride? A, the dangers of the men's mission. B, the power of the American army. C, the adventure of travel by sea. Or D, the transition from old ways to new. Number six, the following question has two parts. Answer part A first and then part B. Part A, 
Click on the highlighted phrase from song that is most clearly an example of a symbol. Home, those that wander, east, or a hawk. Part B, which of these does the symbol identifi identified in part A most likely represent? A, family life. B, poor choices. C, misfortune. Or D, gratitude. The following question has two parts. Answer part A first, then part B. Part A, which is the best restatement of the theme of song? A, growing up is difficult for everyone. B, life is full of unhappiness. C, home is where happiness is found. Or D, staying home is boring. Part B. Which answer best summarizes the details in the poem that most clearly develop the theme identified in Part A? A, the poem uses images of birds leaving a nest to represent the difficulty of growing up. B, the poem uses the image of a nest to represent the love and safety of home. C, the poem uses images of stormy weather to represent doubt and unhappiness. Or D, the poem uses images of wandering and travel <coughs> Excuse me, to show how boring home life can be. All right, analyze craft and structure. Reagan's remarks on East-West relations at the Brandenburg Gate in West Berlin, June 12, 1987. The following passage is from a speech given by President Ronald Reagan at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, Germany. At the time, Germany was divided between West Germany allied with the United States and East Germany allied with the Soviet Union, led by Russia. The city of Berlin was also split in two, physically divided by the Berlin Wall. Read the passage, then answer the questions. Behind me stands a wall that encircles the free sectors of the city, part of a vast system of barriers that divides the entire continent of Europe. From the Baltic south, those barriers cut across Germany in a gash of barbed wire, concrete, dog runs, and guard towers. Farther south, there may be no visible, no obvious wall, but there remain armed guards and checkpoints all the same. Still a restriction on the right to travel, still an instrument, instrument to impose upon ordinary men and women the will of a totalitarian state. It is here in Berlin where the wall emerges most clearly. Here cutting across your city where the news Photo and the television screen have imprinted this brutal division of a continent upon the mind of the world. Standing before the Brandenburg Gate, every man is a German, separated from his fellow men. Every man is a Berliner, forced to look upon a scar. And now the Soviets themselves may, in a limited way, be coming to understand the, the importance of freedom. We hear much from Moscow about a new policy to, of reform and openness. Some political prisoners have been released. Certain foreign new broadcasts are no longer being jammed. Some economic enterprises have been permitted to operate with greater freedom from state control. Are these the beginnings of profound changes in the Soviet state? Or are they token gestures intended to raise false hopes in the West or to strengthen the Soviet system without changing it? We welcome change and openness, for we believe that freedom and security go together. That is the advance of human liberty can only strengthen the cause of world peace. There is one sign that Soviets can make that would unmistakable that would be unmistakable that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbach Borgachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union in Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate, Mr. Gorbachev. Open this gate, Mr. Gorbachev. Tear down this wall. All right. Part A. Which best describes the tone of President Reagan's speech? Apologetic. Reflective mournful, or inspiring. 
Part B. Click on the highlighted sentence in the text that best supports the answer to Part A. Behind me stands a wall that encircles the free sectors of the city, part of a vast system of barriers. But there remain armed guards and checkpoints all the same, still a restriction on the right to travel. And now the Soviets themselves may in a limited way be coming to understand the importance of freedom. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate, Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. What does the underlined phrase in the following excerpt reveal about President Reagan's attitude towards the Berlin Wall? Yet it is here in the Berlin where the wall emerges most clearly, here cutting across your city where the news photo and the television screen have imprinted this brutal division of a continent upon the mind of the world. Standing before the Brandenburg Gate, every man is a German, separated from his fellow men. Every man is a Berliner, forced to look upon a scar. A, he thought it represented the healing of German wounds from the war. B, he thought it was unattractive compared to the rest of Berlin. C, he thought it served as a persistent reminder to humanity of unjust laws. Or D, he thought it showed how once divided nation had been reunited. Number 10. Reagan uses the word gash in the first paragraph of the speech. In each sentence below, the underlined word shares the same denotation or general literal meaning as gash, deep cut, which underlined word has connotations most clearly opposite to gash as Reagan uses it in his speech. Base your answer on context. A, laceration, that deep should be treated with antibiotics. B, to begin the operation, the surgeon made an incision in the patient. C, with a gouge like that in the door, the car is worth much less. Or D, the cat made a slash in the cushions that let the stuffing out. Read the following sentences from the speech. Yet it is here in the Berlin where the wall emerges most clearly. Here, cutting across your city where the news photo and the television screen have imprinted this brutal division of a continent upon the mind of the world. Standing before the Brandenburg Gate, every man is a German separated from his fellow men. Every man is a Berliner forced to look upon a scar. In which sentence does the underlined word most cl clearly have the same connotations as the word brutal in the passage? A, because of a shortage, the authorities have imposed strict limits on gasoline sales. B, the winter cold was so harsh that a number of people were treated for frostbite. C, the athlete undertook a strenuous training program to improve her skills. Or D, he thought it was insensitive, insensitive of her not to invite the couple down the hall to their party. All right, analyze craft and structure, short story. Read the following passage, then answer the questions. When I was a young girl, I learned many good habits at Aunt Agatha's place, habits that served me well later in life. For example, one of my chores was to milk the cows first thing in the morning. Missed milkings weren't going to make either my aunt or cows too happy. If I overslept, I still had to do the milking and then rush off to finish my other chores, such as weeding, clearing brush around the old mill, and repairing fences. For every minute I overslept, I found there was a minute later on when I would have to rush. I learned the importance of getting up on time. The habit of early rising stuck, and ever since, I've never failed to get myself out of the house on time in the morning. Aunt Agatha fed all of her workers, myself included, a good breakfast, but I was on my own for lunch. One day I went out with the crew to work on some fields a good drive away from the house. I had forgotten to pack my lunch, and although Tony and Bud shared some of theirs with me, I was famished when we got home. When I told Aunt Agatha what had happened, she sniffed and said, Them that take care of themselves get well taken care of. The rest most likely go hungry. Still, I noticed she dished me out an extra big helping at dinner. At dessert, she asked me twi 
choice if I wanted an extra slice of pie. Number 12, which choice provides the best evidence that the story is written from a first person point of view? A, pronouns such as he, she, and they are used. B, the story tells about something that happened in the past. C, the story includes a quotation from one of the characters. Or D, the narrator is a character in the story. Number 13, how would the story most likely be different if it were told from a third person omniscient point of view? A, it would be told from Aunt Agatha's point of view. B, it would not describe the feelings of the girl. C, it would tell what Aunt Agatha thinks about the girl. Or D, it would not include the quotation from Aunt Agatha. Number 14, which sentence best states a central theme of the passage? A, hard work often will not be rewarded until much later in life. B, good habits start with getting up early and getting to work on time. C, if one person is irresponsible, everyone ends up with less than he or she deserves. Or D, strictness may conceal kindness and both strictness and kindness can be ways of caring. Language development, vocabulary from Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Paul Revere's Ride is about Paul Revere, a patriot in the American Revolution, who wrote in 1775 to warn the colonists that British troops were coming. Read the excerpt from the poem, then answer the questions. Then he said good night and with muffled oar silently rowed to the Charleston shore. Just as the moon rose over the bay, where swinging wide at her moorings lay, the Somerset, British man of war. A phantom ship with each mast and spar across the moon like a prison bar, and a huge black hulk that was magnified by its own reflection in the tide. Which is the best definition of muffled as it is used in the excerpt? Base your answer on context. A. Sharpened. B. Quieted. C. Amplified or D, carved. Read the following dictionary entry for mooring. Click the definition that best fits the way the word moorings is used in the poem. Base your answer on context. One, often moorings the place where a boat is tied up or anchored. Two, often moorings ropes or anchors used to keep a boat from leaving its place. Three, the act of tying up a boat. Four, something such as a belief or routine that grants a person stability or security. 17. From your knowledge of the suffix O-U-S, what is most likely meaning of the word disastrous? A, the quality of a disaster. B, characterized by disaster. C, similar to disaster. Or D, unlike a disaster. Number 18. Read the following sentences. After 15 minutes of circling, it was clear that we were in the wrong place, but Diana refused to stop and ask for directions or even admit that we were lost. Sometimes she can be so bullheaded. The word bullheaded takes its meaning from qualities associated with an animal, the bull. Which of the following is the best meaning of bullheaded in these sentences? A. Disorganized. B. Stubborn. C. Strong or D, angry. Number 19, read the following sentence. When Dr. Mastin stepped to the stage to accept the award, he stopped to appreciate the moment, knowing that he had reached the pinnacle of his career. The word pinnacle comes from a Latin word referring to part of the roof of a house or other building. Given this information, choose the most likely meaning of pinnacle in the sentence. A, high point, B, structure, C, path home, or D, shelter. Number 20. From your knowledge of the Greek root psych, what is most likely the meaning of psychobiology? A, field of biology related to the body. B, field of biology related to the mind. C, field of biology related to social groups. Or D, field of biology related to chemistry.
Number 21. You never know. I wasn't so sure when I knocked on the door if I was being honest. My grandmother's neighbor made me nervous. I waited a few seconds and was about to bolt when the door scraped open. Oh, you're here. The shaky old voice says, the voice was attached to Mr. Jenkins, the most ancient person I knew. who had lived in the neighborhood since well before my parents had ever met. Uh, hi, my dad said you needed some help in the yard, I said. Yes, yes, indeed. My knees aren't what they used to be. Not much good for gardening anymore. Won't you come in? Mr. Jenkins asked. Mr. Jenkins proceeded to explain to me where I could find everything. I needed exactly what my assignment was. That day, it was just mowing the lawn, but next time I could work on the flowers and bushes. I didn't hesitate to get to work, and we was finished within an hour. I rapped on the door to yell. Mr. Jenkins, I was leaving. Thank you. See you on Wednesday, waved Mr. Jenkins. When Wednesday came, I dutifully showed up at the appointed time, and Mr. Jenkins slowly shuffled out into the yard with me. I was hoping to finish the trimming and be done. After I got to talking with Mr. Jenkins, I found it hard to tear myself away. Aiden made these notes about his nonfiction narrative. Mr. Jenkins has rose bushes over 50 years old, planted by late wife Stella. Oak tree in the backyard, planted when first child was born. Mr. Jenkins, depressed that he no, can no longer work in his yard, has story for nearly every plant he has planted, and working in his yard has taken a whole new meaning for me. Read these sentences, which appear underlined in the nonfiction narrative. I was hoping to finish the trimming and be done. After I got to talking with Mr. Jenkins, I found it hard to tear myself away. Which transition word or phrase could best be used with the sentences also to show contrast? Also, however, for example, or most of all, please go back and check your answers before you submit.